The big September Direct is in the bag. It was chock full of announcements and a lot of new stuff. So we have highlighted the five things that we loved from today's presentation and the five things that we didn't quite love. Gabe, it was a pretty darn full show and a lot of people across the internet seem to be very, very excited by what was announced. So in honor of positivity, let's start with the five things we liked most about today's Direct. Yes, we always start positive first here. I know here we had a little bit of mixed reactions, uh, you and I at least, and uh, we'll get into that with the stuff that we didn't like as much. But why don't you get us started with the stuff that we did like, Zach? Sure. So began with Luigi's Mansion 3, which was a an out-of-nowhere announcement, an out-of-nowhere surprise, and those are always, to me, the most fun when you don't see it coming, you don't expect it, and then they just hit you hard. Uh, I did not have my stream tweak to 1080p. It was, it was at 360p because I just logged on. And so I legit was like, oh, they're showing the 3DS game. That's cute. I was like, the 3 isn't for 3DS. The 3 is for Luigi's Mansion 3. So it was a really nice moment for me to be completely surprised. We got to see a few rooms, and once I did tweak it up to 1080p, it looks good. It looks like it belongs on Switch, and I think... It would have been great if it was like released alongside the, the DS title or the 3DS title, but um, that is a great addition to next year's lineup. Yeah, that would have been just cannibalization, right? I did appreciate that they showed a little bit of gameplay, like a tinge of gameplay. Some other releases, uh, some reveals didn't get any gameplay. So it was nice to see like what Luigi's Mansion will look like on the Switch. That game has a bit of a special place in my heart because I played the original back at the Cube Club with my little brother. We waited for hours in the early morning freezing cold in Michigan and got that's that's the first GameCube game I played. So uh, nice to see it evolving to Switch when they brought the original to 3DS. I was like, why aren't they doing three? Hey, guess what, Gabe? They are doing three. Uh, from there, let's just get the other big one out the way. Animal Crossing, super cool way that they unveiled it. You know, right from the the moment that Isabella appeared on screen, I knew it was a smash thing. I knew it was a smash thing. And I, I like the heart rate differences for people as they get excited and then get disappointed and then get excited would have been really fun to see. Um, but I did like that they play these elongated games with their fans, right? Like I thought it was a little bit cruel to like string out the Isabel joke for as long as they did, but then they made sure that they gave the goods to the people by announcing Animal Crossing uh, for 2019. Yeah, and the cool thing about this game is there's going to be a lot more to be revealed going forward. We don't know a time frame for when in 2019. We don't know a name for the game. We know that Tom Nook is going to be very busy while all the fun <laughs> people are having fun in Smash. But Poor yeah, guy. I, I, I'm happy that the game is coming. Finally, people can stop talking about it on comment sections because, believe it or not, this is one of the games that gets mentioned the most in our comment section. Yeah. People really love Absolutely. Animal Crossing, so I, I'm glad it's finally announced. And, uh, yeah, next year sometime. It's it's kind of like checking off the, like, okay, so now Luigi's Mansion coming to Switch, Animal Crossing coming to Switch. Like, we still have, like, Pikmin and a few others, but they are really working through the list of, like, Pokemon, Smash, Mario Kart. It's the Mario top Kart, tier Mar B titles. They're, like, this is the top of the heap of the games that aren't, like, the biggest Nintendo Mario's franchise. Zelda, yeah. yeah, so, yeah, yeah, I'm happy. Animal Crossing is not my exact cup of it's tea. It's a lot of people's but... cup of tea. <laughs> It's a, a lot of people like tea, and I, I gave fun fact about me. I did learn to like tea after years and years of only being a hot chocolate drinker. So maybe I will learn to like Welcome to Animal Crossing uh, when it hits my platform, and I can welcome myself to that world. Zach, if this time next year you have like a Tom Nook tattoo or something, I know you would never get a tattoo, but if you had like an Isabel like portrait on a wall, a or plushie, something, I'm gonna a be plushie. Can, can we go with a plushie? Is that yeah, instead I'm of a tattoo? Yeah, I'm so upset. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think this is a middle of the year game. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I think it would be perfect for like a, a June, July, August, September uh, release. I guess September is technically fall, but um, I mean, the, you're, saying about a, their... you're saying it's a summer game. I think that would be a good fit for Animal Crossing. Maybe I'm maybe I'm off on that, but I feel like Luigi's Mansion more fall, Animal Crossing more summer, um, and then they did touch on some early games, but those are not the biggest things we enjoyed because Gabe. They gave you, like, 15 million Final Fantasy games. All right. It started off with, like, you know, they started showing Final Fantasy VII, but before that, they had shown, like, the pocket stuff and... Uh, the the spin-offs. Yeah, yeah. The, the GameCube Crystal Chronicles game coming over, and I was like, okay, this is cool. Crystal Chronicles in particular is cool because that game was not super easy to play with friends on GameCube, mm -hmm. and now mm -hmm. it's going to be very easy. So Pocket Edition for 15 doesn't do as much for me just because that game was supposed to come out last week, and yeah, I think that that's one of the things that... They did not modify the Direct. It sure didn't seem like yeah, they, they had the modify Mega Man. direct. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, sure. But then I saw Final Fantasy VII. I'm like, oh, and then I saw the nine. I was like, oh my god, seven, eight, and nine. And then they're like, ten, twelve is coming, ten two is coming. But for some reason, eight isn't. Squall mm -hmm. feels so angry. Squall is somewhere with his gun blade, <laughs> just upset. Uh, so yeah, I, I personally love all of these games. Uh, mm -hmm. Nine is one of my favorite 
Final Fantasy games that I haven't played in so long. I played it way back in the day. I remember loving it ever since then. I've touched it on and off, but I've never like fully played it since its original release. So that's one I'm absolutely going to jump into. Final Fantasy VII, I've, I've played a lot. So I, I don't know mm. if that's going to be one that I instantly go to, but ten is so fantastic, and uh, twelve is so underrated. So the Final Fantasy pile that they've given us is something exciting for me. Yeah, it was a rainstorm of, of FF, and I wish that 12 was this year. I mean, we, we don't control those dates, but I wanted to get into that one on PS4 and Xbox One. I never got a chance to, so it would have been great if that came this holiday season. But and it is Zodiac Age, year. so... Yeah, yeah, and, and that the, the 10 and 10.2 are the HD remasters, mm-hmm. um, so... Again, just really filling out the genre gaps, and you saw that across the board with things like City Skylines, uh, with things like Diablo 3, Eternal... Um, th- they are bringing basically like, hey, like things that gamers like and, and genres that people are into from across ages. Sometimes it comes back to bite them, but uh, here it was nice to see them really just wrapping up a franchise and like giving you a whole bundle but and not just like though, piecemealing it. Seriously, why is an eight there? <laughs> like that's like, such a <laughs> weird thing. Question of the day. What happened to eight? Uh, eight is pretty great. Um, all right. So from there... The, the town announcement was, was a shocker to me. I, I did not see that coming at all. I don't think anyone could have predicted that. But Game Freak bringing a brand new RPG to the Switch that has the reverse concept of so many of today's titles. Instead of going massive and like a whole world to explore, the entire game takes place in a town. Please change the name, by the way, Game Freak. I love you. It's a cool idea. Please change the well, name. I like uh, it. But it has a good... Town? Town. Come on, man. Also, we don't know how big the town is. It could be huge. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like a lifetime movie. It's not a, like it's not a village. Like a, it's a town. A couple of women. I know, but I did like the progression of town to cities to then nations with civilization. Mm-hmm. So it was it was a very nice, uh, like it escalated quickly and, and right on track. But I think town looks good. The art style is fun. Um, the combat looks different and unique. Like it, it's obviously a big switch from Pokemon um, and nice that Game Freak is really getting on board in so many ways. We know that they have the 2019 Pokemon game coming as well. Obviously, Let's Go gets mentioned here and this. Pretty cool. This is like so different and th- that's fantastic. It's refreshing to see them do something non-Pokemon related, first of all, and they keep it in the mm-hmm. RPG style, but it's done in a unique way with an art style that is wholly unique as well. You cannot, if, if you like take a screenshot of this and you show it to somebody and ask them like who they thought like made it, Game Freak probably isn't who they're going to say. So mm. I, I thought that that was a cool aspect of the reveal. I'm very excited about this. I don't know when it happens, probably like later in the year. I can't imagine it's going to be an early. 2019 is so full, yeah, they're, according they're... to Nintendo. If, if they keep their dates, it's, it's packed with first party titles. And, you know, Pokemon requires certain commonalities throughout the franchise but tell maybe a chance for these really great game designers to utilize their other ideas or things that are too outlandish for the pokemon franchise or that you know maybe don't fit in with the model that they've established so that honestly could be like a really great outlet for them to get kind of creative and come up with something super cool they've been invested in rpgs for forever and now they get to completely use a different way plus like Game Freak does good work i really like drill dozer so this is probably one of the you know the, the job listings and things we saw Maybe mm-hmm. this is one of them, you know, the 3D environments, and everybody's like, yeah, Pokemon, Pokemon, and yeah, of course. But they also have another thing, yeah, cooking, mm-hmm. cooking, cooking, cooking. They're also cooking new controllers for us, Gabe. Uh, the icons from the 6.0 data mine paid off, and we get NES controllers for the online. Now, on one hand, I really wanted something new announced for the online service, whether it be themes or the mention of SNES games, but I do think the way that they're handling NES games, bringing in the controllers, you can. You know, decide if the price is right or wrong for you, $60 for a two-pack. Um, but formulating them to be wireless and to function as, I guess they don't function as Joy-Con, but they're sort of Joy-Con. Yeah, because you, you can charge them that way, but I don't think you can play with them like that. Yeah, I don't think you can use them in, like, other titles or whatnot. But I did like that, that you can charge them. Um, and I think, like, there's got to be SNES, right? I think that's got to be coming based on the icons from 6.0, just based on the way this is working. And... You don't have to get the NES controllers, but it would be cool in a future where you have an SNES controller, an NES controller, maybe even an N64 or GameCube controller at some point, and they're all linked to this platform. It then becomes the hub that we always hope for. Probably pipe dream thinking on my part, but I did. I also like the interface. Like I think the way the NES games are organized on the system and how they look, really cool. And I do think there'll be fun to be had by reliving these games and in some cases exploring them in new ways with the online. Yeah, Tuesday will probably have a big old day of NES fun that Zach mm-hmm. and I can play together. That's going to be <laughs> a very interesting. Yeah. But 
I kind of wish it was just the SNES controller because it's just a superior controller. That's not that different. Yeah. D-pad could have still been on point just with the extra buttons, but then maybe that would have tipped the hand a little bit. I do feel like SNES is going to be making its way to the... It's got to be. It has it's, to. It's got to yeah, be. Yeah, for sure. It looks like three games a month is at least the initial rollout. They had three for October, three for November, three for December to add to that initial 20 on NES. I would like more. Uh, you know, the, the Wii Shop weekly updates, I, I miss those where we got a bunch of virtual console games, but alas, this is not virtual console, people. So uh, that... That kind of wraps the, the things that we liked most. I think, you know, obviously the big new announcements for Switch, Luigi's Mansion 3, Animal Crossing, and just abundant overload of Final Fantasy for Gabe, Town being something totally new, and uh, then those NES controllers, and just kind of the, the hopes and dreams that this will continue to evolve uh, for Nintendo nostalgia. Now, on to the five things we did. There was <laughs> more aspects of the Direct that we did like and, and sort of retreads of games like Mario Party. Um, special shout out to Mario Tennis Ace is finally getting outfits, gear, yeah. accessories. That's been a long time coming. We called that forever in a new co-op mode. That's cool. Um, so overall, you know, a lot to love. But there were some things that disappointed us. And I think the main one to start with is that the major publisher third party initiative is not not doing so hot right now. Yeah, Dark Souls is, is coming, and, you know, that's cool, but the scissor reel of the third-party stuff that they did was, like, a huge bummer to me. They, they, they show 2K. 2K's out, <laughs> and it's mm -hmm. been out for, you know, at least in some form for a week now, if, if you got the anniversary mm -hmm. edition. So the fact that that still gets mentioned, like, ugh. That, that, that... Well, and 2K also bringing Civ 6, and they're bringing, you know, they're trying. It's just... They've got NBA Playgrounds 2, I guess, is technically 2K. I, I just wish it was more new stuff. I mean, Ubisoft, Starlink, um, you know, quick note that Ubisoft is bringing Odyssey, Assassin's Creed, to Switch in Japan via the cloud service. If that was coming to America, that would have been exciting. Would have been a big deal over here. Yeah. Um, but you are seeing, you know, them digging way back, even with Square Enix. Yes, it's great that they're bringing Final Fantasy. We love that. But it's, it's, it's reaching back instead of either new exclusive properties or... Day and date. I mean, they you know they have the Lego, they have NBA, FIFA's coming, but it still is like a bummer that outside of Panic Button and Bethesda, like they can't quite get it where we want it to be. Yeah, Capcom, right? That that that's one of the uh, publishers that was like really like missing. Yes, the Mega Man Eleven thing. Yeah, I get it. Mm -hmm. But you know, I for some reason thought that maybe a Resident Evil Four like thing could have like happened, mm. stuff like that. And yes, it's more older. That's games. still digging back. Yeah. Yeah, I know it's still more older games, but there's a remake of Resident Evil Two coming, and that's not going to be on Switch clearly. But right. if stuff like that was on Switch, we could feel way more better about third parties. But in its current state, the games that are coming third party Switch this year. It's versions of the games that were there last year. FIFA, uh, 2K, like you had mentioned. And Civ is cool. Dark Souls is cool. But it's a bummer. There, there's not a lot to get excited about third-party-wise the rest of the year. Yeah, another and, LEGO game, which we had, we had LEGO games last year. so. And, you know, last year they unveiled the Bethesda stuff here in this Direct last September. And you could say that, I guess, the Square Enix, you know, barrage is, is that, you know, replacement. But the Square Enix stuff, like... I don't know. Getting Doom and Wolfenstein 2 on Switch was, to me, way more exciting than... than Dark Souls is on that Final caliber, you know. Not mentioned here, and it's out, like, in a few weeks, but Dark Souls is on the caliber. A delayed Dark Souls remaster is on the same caliber as Wolfenstein 2? And Doom, yeah, I mean... Mm. I just wish there was more third party, and I wish that, like, hey, Starlink will be cool. I guess, I guess Starlink, like, we should consider that as a nice day and date get. Yeah. You know, that, that, that is one that With should count, cool but I would have loved to see stuff. Ubisoft. Saw Wolf in the, yeah. Right, the Star Fox scenes look great. Like, those cutscenes look top-notch. Mm -hmm. I mean, man. Um, you know, if you if you thought that, like, Mario didn't look as good in Mario plus Rabbids, like, Star Fox looks freaking fantastic in Star Fox. So that should be cool. Shout out to Slippy. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> New Super Mario Bros. Deluxe. Liam called it. A lot of people called it. I have virtually no enthusiasm for that game. Yeah, I don't know if that game's for us. I mean, we, and, and why is it January? Why is that not? I don't know why it's not the fall, fall calendar. Yeah, I don't know why it's not this fall. Because if it, because if it's out of the fall calendar, I'm not personally excited. But I think it makes a lot of sense, and it, and it fills out, you know, another game, another technically like big AAA first party, get it on the store shelves game. You know, it's it's a big package. There's a lot of levels there. They're adding Nabbit and Toadette, and weirdest moment of the direct for me, Peachette. <laughs> what is that? What is it, Peachette? <laughs> Toad evolves into Peachette. Toadette. What is happening? I want to peach out Amiibo, but I, 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 we knew it was coming, but like we hoped all along that it would not be there, right? Like we hoped that that would not be their, their extra thing, and it was so weird to me that it's a January release. I mean, it's January 11th, so it's, it's very soon, but 
Yeah, the, the, the only reason that that would have made sense for me is like, hey, holiday. So you get it out, mm-hmm. like, November, get it there for Black Friday. Uh, somebody that's buying a Switch for the first time for the kids for the first time, and they have multiple mm-hmm. kids, this is a game for them. That's perfect. So the fact that yeah. it's not in holiday, like, that's just befuddling to me. I don't know what the big deal is uh, with, with this. I mean, I guess it's just not ready, but... Yeah, that doesn't make sense. Or they just want to spread out their calendar and stay away from Smash and Pokemon. Um, Mario Party, like that's if you, family fun. Yeah. Keep it a Mario Party this year, I guess. Staying on Smash, I think the bundle is weak. I think after seeing the Pokemon bundle, which has like cool colored Joy-Con and then it has really cool art on the back of the Switch, modifying that for the first time ever, and even like a cute dock. I think the dock is good for Smash, but I think a couple things are very odd. One, the Joy-Con are moderately uninspired. <laughs> it's it's the smash emblem on, on it's two it's two white lines on the gray joy-con is it a different gray it's the exact same is it a di- is it a darker black is it a, is it a different a slightly different color i don't i don't think so i think it's the same one but it sure looks like the same one yeah um, so yeah, i understand also your reservations. It's, it's, nothing on the on the back like, uh on the back plate right and it's out like a month i guess you can get it early and that's kind of fun but that's also sort of weird to me that it releases november 2nd yeah you have fun staring at that download code for a month <laughs> yeah enjoy those numbers <laughs> cherish them and plug them in every day in case maybe you get lucky you won't but um no i, I just i don't know I, I think with how fun and vibrant the pokemon joy con were it would have been cool to see them do something different they have the pro controller which is where i'll be investing for my smash accessories but i i don't know we saw the mock-up of the bundle i just hope that if, if there was even something on the back it would have been great that would have done enough for me. Or, like, one black Joy-Con, one white, and, like, or, I don't Zach, know. Zach, you just... weren't going to buy two new Switch consoles this time. Okay, I wasn't. I wasn't. Was I? Was I? I do. Maybe I was. If they were both super custom, I would have. I'm a crazy collector. Yeah. Okay, moving right no, no, along. No, 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 um, I, I, wanted, I wanted to touch on something for, for Smash. Uh, it was a little disappointing that we had nothing Spirit Mode related. I, yeah, th- where was that? Yeah. When's that coming? It would, be, okay, would be great if the game just launched without any clue what it is. It would be. Would be really great. So keep this up, Nintendo. <laughs> Shift that into the love category that they didn't talk about Spirits Mode. Um, okay, I think Isabel, with the Animal Crossing, two thumbs up. With the discussion of Isaac, Gino, Incineroar. <laughs> Isabel is your character? I mean, like, <laughs> Pie in the Sky, Banjo. You know, people get excited for some of these possible characters. Skull Kid. I don't think Isabel is that exciting. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not gonna main as Isabel. <laughs> no. But I'm sure there's a section of people that are very excited about that. Uh, by that, but it, it's just not us. I mean, I think like. I I know that they're independent, but it was so much to service that Animal Crossing announcement. That it just I don't know. It just felt paced weird. It, it, like to me, like the K K Rule trailer and the Ridley trailer are like so sick. And this one, yeah, I get it's done in the Animal Crossing style, but like, and it was to service that announcement and like the long con that eventually like gotcha. I'm just exactly. But you already Skull. got your I'm KK Rule announcement. Let, whoever loves Isabel, let them have it. I know. But people love Skullkin. They were so excited for Isaac. And like the idea of some of these other characters returning, or I guess appearing maybe, would, would have been fun. Waluigi. Waluigi. Wal- Waluigi's not happening. People need to get over that. All right. The last thing that we didn't really like today was it still is such a blast from the past time right now. So many of these games are being drug up from literally different decades. And in some cases, that's cool. It's nice of a system that honors the past, but it feels weird when they're like, the 2007 hit, the 2003 title, the 2010 game. Like, yeah, the Chocobo's Dungeon game. <laughs> like, that, like, wait, what? Yeah, I was like, like it's one thing when you get like Doom a little bit late, or you get Wolfenstein 2 a little bit late, or Dark Souls even a little bit late because it's remastered, but like, I mean, are you just, just chummy for Saints Row the Third? <laughs> Well, Saints and, Row wasn't a part of this, but, you know... I know, but I'm just saying, like, in general, this blast from the past ideology or strategy is just strange to me. Yeah, we wish we can have, like, all new things all the time, but even, like... Or not even new, but can we stay in, like, this generation? Is, like, or, or even... No, la- no like, dude, I'm okay, still bothered so, by, like, Diablo. Like, it's a, it's a they're, good game and everything, but, like... we. Need- I'm excited for Diablo, but, like, okay, hey, we're taking the Wii Kirby's Epic Yarn and bringing it to 3DS, but we'll, we, we got one better. GameCube Crystal Chronicles on Switch. And yes, it's remastered, but it's like, that, leave me alone. What, what, what's going on? Yeah, that, that, it, it is just weird when like everything is moving so far forward in other spaces of the gaming industry to see like this moving back. And, and like, I love that from the indie space of bringing mechanics and concepts and even genres back from the past and like giving us new twists and takes on them. I just think I'm really starting to tire of digging into the catalog and like, well, what could we, what could we possibly find that would be fun on Switch today? 
Yeah, I mean, it does feel like it's just like a let's rumble through the old closet and see what still has some life in it. I have to I have to agree with you. Breath of the Wild and Mario Odyssey were like good, refreshing experiences that moved very traditional franchises forward in interesting ways. But that's not happening as much anymore. Hopefully, Fire Emblem and Luigi's Mansion, Metroid, you know, all, all these other things that are coming next year, they're big. Hopefully, they iterate in, in cool, creative mm-hmm. ways. But I mean, I have to agree with you. Yes, I, I fall victim to some of these things. I still get excited for old Final Fantasy games, even though I can get mm-hmm. them on PC or I maybe already have them. But it's still cool that they're coming to Switch. I kind of fall for it, but every once in a while, I'm like, hey, man, like, can we have some new stuff that isn't old? And Nintendo, you know, I fully expect the Animal Crossing to feel like a bold, brand new experience. I fully ex- expect Luigi's Mansion 3 to have new twists and turns. So I don't really take issue with them. It, it's more like these third-party titles that they're... Why are they digging so deep? And maybe that's the idea. We've, we've gone over time and time again. The Switch can do stuff. They're doing Odyssey via cloud, and they're doing Doom Eternal without cloud. So it can do good, cool stuff from the current year or maybe a few years prior. But like, I would just so much rather see them bring, again, these are just personal preferences, like a Dead Space collection or something that, yes, it's older, but it's like a few years older, and it's not tapping back into when I was in middle school. I mean, you're still because because what I want what I want from that nostalgia is I want virtual console and they're also not investing fully in that so it's a bit of like a I'm gonna call Nintendo I'm gonna call Nintendo let us know in the comments down below what you guys loved and didn't love from today's presentation your favorite thing your least favorite thing we'd love to hear your take those are our five in each category a pretty fun show nonetheless and definitely some big moments especially uh, for those Animal Crossing fans Luigi's Mansion fans and I think just fans of the Switch in general the fact that they are keeping games coming and that they had dozens to talk about today was nice it did feel like a very full presentation with a lot of announcements um, some of them we knew about some we didn't and some were complete surprises like town so let us know your take in the comments down below make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all the latest and greatest from the switch whenever their next direct is probably not till next year so we got some time now to let things simmer and cook and then hopefully they'll come back with gameplay i will add that i wish there was more gameplay shown um like it would have been cool to see a little bit more of luigi's mansion probably not ready um but alas Make sure to follow us on Twitter and Discord. We'll get links in the description below. For myself and Gabe, fantastic day. Thanks so much for watching. And until next time, Switch Force out.